Hello, and welcome to Panda X. I am your host, Panda. Let's begin by stating that it has been a very long time since I have done any of these episodes. I have been busy, and when I say busy, I mean I have been playing a lot of World of Warcraft with my wife. Uh, To be specific, uh, WoW Classic, because she has not experienced WoW Classic ever and i think she likes it better than the retail version which is great because i also do not like the retail version but that's not what i'm here about but that's that's the first thing why i've been so busy i've been playing a lot of that trying to get my uh my mileage other in other words my money been trying to get my money's worth out of that game because if you've ever played wow you realize it takes forever to level and to do the things you want to do so that's the first thing as to why I've been busy. <laughs> the second thing has is bit yeah, excuse me. I'm doing this in the morning and my voice isn't quite there, but whatever. Okay, the second reason why I've been so busy is because I am currently working on three, yes, three tabletop games. And I'm not gonna speak about them here. One is already in the alpha version. But um <clears throat> excuse me. But the other two are still in prototyping phases because they are for a uh, what's a contest. There you go. I'm trying to look for the word. They are for a contest that is going to be happening later on this year. And I'm just trying to get all my bits and pieces together for those. So it's, yeah, it's crazy. And then, of course, I work full-time job. <clears throat> Again, excuse me. It's early in the morning. I apologize, but I just need to get this out because I'm going to forget to do this if I don't do it now. So that's why I've been so busy. That's why I haven't been posting anything really of significance uh, to social media. And I'm starting back up again with this podcast episode here. So the episode is titled, Who Are You? And um, again, I have, in case you're brand new to this, this uh, series, I have several other episodes on Podbean that are not yet over on my YouTube channel. I've skipped over them because it is June, it is Pride Month, and I think this is very appropriate to be doing this episode at this time. Let's dig, dive, whatever you want to call it, deep (laughs) into this subject of who are you? It is Pride Month. Happy Pride Month again. Uh, Hopefully you've been fortunate enough to understand who you are at this point in your life. If you haven't, there's no shame in that. Everyone uh, figures out who they are eventually. I don't know how long it takes. For some people, it's almost instantaneously when you reach adulthood or even when you're a teen. For others, it takes, I mean, decades of just living life to understand who you are as a person. So if you know who you are, congrats. If you don't know who you are, congrats. Because you know what? We're all in this together, regardless of what anyone else says. I just want to get that out of the way first as my personal opinion on this whole Pride Month. I think it's totally fine and great that uh, we have such a thing. <laughs> I, I Well, it's it's hard for me to describe because one part of me says this is great that we are celebrating diversity of, of human beings. Because that's what it is. It's a celebration of people who are not heterosexual. So it's it's an inclusion of all people. That's why they, they, I think anyway, that's why the rainbow is the symbol, or I should say the universal symbol for this month is because it includes all colors of the rainbow, meaning we should include all people (laughs) in celebration of, of anything and everything pretty much, right? That's my opinion on that. So that that part of me is happy. But the other part of me, and this is the more cynical part of me, and this kind of ties into what I'm going to be talking about here in a couple of moments. The other part of me is very sad that we, as a human race, have to go as far as declaring a month of Pride Month because um, everyone else who is not straight, who is not heterosexual, uh, is, is not celebrated properly. You're either shunned or you're, you're hated. And I, I think that's wrong. I really do. I think that's stupid, bigoted, and m- misinformed uh, in so many other ways, more than just what I'm going to talk about here. So I just want to get my 
stance on this whole Pride Month out there. I agree with it. I like it. I'm also sad that it's here, but it is what it is. And just keep doing what you're doing as a human being. You have my full support. As long as you're not murdering other people, because then you're a dick. Anyway, <laughs> going. <laughs> there's so many things I could talk about, but okay, let me let me stick on topic here. Um, I'm gonna start by saying I actually did the thumbnail first. Usually, in my process of doing these the these podcast episodes, I typically come up with an overall um, topic or theme. And I look at it, I study it, and I think, okay, what can I talk about? Here are some key points I should talk about during the episode. And then I just roll with it. That's the first thing I typically do. This time around, because I've been inspired by so many other uh, social media influences, mainly Reddit, but there's other platforms too that have inspired me to do this, um, with topics and posts specifically about Pride Month, I decided to go the other way around and make the thumbnail first. And I was just having such a great time with it. Like... I'm just looking at it right now and it's just, it's hilarious to me, especially because I put the uh, three exclamation points at the, the Book of Mormon picture. That That's great. It's just like, <laughs> if I were to describe my thumbnail right now to you, um, and it's bare, you don't see everything on it. You don't see like the, uh, the spectrum, the audio spectrum of me talking. You don't see the title episode because that's, that's not how I do it. But for, for the bare bones of this thumbnail, I just keep on looking at myself, um, shooting out those Mega Man pellets. <laughs> I call them pellets because they're so tidy. <laughs> Mega Man pellets with the words self-discovery, open-mindedness, and acceptance in the middle. Over to the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon's like shocked. <laughs> those exclamation points just sell it to me. It's like I'm looking at a Metal Gear Solid <laughs> freaking outtake. <laughs> but uh, it, it's great. Um so, so based on uh, my thumbnail, I'm going to start by talking about these three um, words, self-discovery, open-mindedness, and acceptance. And I want to kind of, um, I guess, do a quick, I don't know if it's going to be quick. I shouldn't say quick. I want to do an overview of how I feel the church treats these words and how they re- they are related to everyone who is a part of the church or who may not be a part of the church. So I'm going to go with, with self-discovery. Self-discovery. That is directly tied into the title, Who Are You? I'm going to take this time to issue you a challenge. Okay? And, and this is this is something so stupid. Well, it's not so stupid, but it, it's a method that the church taught me as a missionary when as a missionary when you go out there you bear testimony you provide the facts and then at the very end you challenge them to do something to increase their faith in jesus christ what they meant to say is to increase their faith in wanting to become a member of this church so that we can take their money but i digress <laughs> i'm gonna open i'm <laughs> i'm going to provide this this open-ended challenge you can do it or not I mean, I per, I've done it already because I, I thought about it a couple days ago. I'm like, oh, this is an interesting way of looking at things. But with the title, who are you? Literally ask yourself, who are you? I did this and I was shocked to see within my own self-reflection that one of the first things that I wanted to say, but I didn't say to myself was, oh, I, I'm a child of God. I'm a son of God. Okay. I, I thought of those, that phrasing. And I looked back on my life and I realized, wait a minute. That phrasing was ingrained into my mind. Very much so throughout the entire time I was a Mormon. It's kind of crazy to think of it like that. And sure, it may be a little cynical of me to to state that, but really for those of you in the church, ask yourself that question. Who are you? (laughs) You are doing very well. If the first phrase is not, I am a child of God. I am a son or daughter of God. If you don't say that at the very beginning of, of that, of answering the question, who are you? Then you are doing a lot better than most people that I've met in the church. Because the first thing, whenever I ask somebody, you know, what, who are you? 
they'll come up with some stupid response like oh, I'm, I'm a son of god i'm a daughter daughter of god like no 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 that's <laughs> that's not what i meant i meant who are you as a person you know, what are your hobbies like what do you do for a living like who are you it's not i i'm a member of the church you shouldn't be answering that first if you're answering if you're using that phrase or answering that way at the very beginning of the challenge then i hate to tell you this but you are being pushed through like a product you're being pushed through this cycle of manipulation of um <laughs> of discipline of <laughs> it's true though <laughs> you, you oh jesus okay you have to discipline yourself Actually, you don't even do it. It's not even you doing the discipline. It's the church mind controlling you at this point and disciplining yourself to, con I should say, conditioning yourself to have the discipline to always remind yourself that you are a son or daughter of God. And it's, it's weird that they do it that way to me now looking back on it, but it makes total sense. The reason why they do it this way from what I just understand right now, right in this moment, right as I'm talking, is um, they do these sort of tactics in order to have the individual and the family uh, as an extension of that, or uh, presuming your family is a part of the church, um, to have the group be more comfortable being a part of the church, because that, that should be the main focus, is that you are loved, and it's every Mormon out there who doesn't understand that God loves them, well, whatever the, the um, ward, I couldn't find the word for it, whatever ward you're in hasn't done a good enough job, apparently, of trying to uh, put put you through the conveyor belt as a product of uh, teaching you those things, okay? Because that, that's one of the main things of the church is they teach you that we have a father in heaven, God, who loves you as his son or his daughter it, it's just how it is okay it's it's been like that for decades for years okay <laughs> that's i just recognize that right now it's um that's so sad to me uh that a church has to go as far as manipulating its members into only believing that as the only possibility in this life is that we have a heavenly father and of course heavenly mother's there too but she's kind of off to the side we don't really talk about heavenly mother do we no we do not out of respect yes that's the reason out of respect <laughs> okay whatever i'm done with self-discovery but seriously ask yourself that question who are you if you if you want to answer firstly that you are a son or daughter of god then i'm sorry but you have been brainwashed and I would advise you to rethink your position in life um, to just stay away <laughs> from, from church teachings for a little bit. Do your own research. Really go out there. Really experience the world. Okay? And, and see what it has to offer. Go, go, this is sounding more like a freaking, like a quest, like in a movie in Star Wars or something it's like you must go and venture forth and overcome these different tri trials to discover who you are. I'm not trying to say you should do that because that, that sounds like a lot of work, but honestly, just give it a try for a moment to not instill or ingrain any church teachings into your life just for a brief moment. Maybe it's a day. Maybe it's a weekend. Do something for you, not for the church. Go find out who you are, what you like, what you don't like. That's my challenge for that. And that, that's that's why I'm going to leave it at because I've done it and I know who I am. I recognize who I am. It, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> I am many things, okay? But I'm no longer going to think of myself first and foremost as a son or daughter of God because that brings up painful memories and realizations that the church has indeed brainwashed me at some point. That's all I'm trying to say about that. Okay, moving on open-mindedness oh this is a fun one <laughs> so much fun <laughs> okay so i have to go back to the roots of my position on the church and that is this in every episode from here on out 
and I think I've been saying this for the past two or three episodes, I can't remember, I will always openly admit the only reason why the church exists and why it, tr- it teaches the things that it teach teaches, that doesn't sound like a correct sentence, but the reason why it teaches <laughs> those topics um, that it teaches to individuals and families is so that they can get your money. I am 100% um, let's see, what, what's what I'm looking for? I'm 100% convinced yeah, I, I guess convinced and, and sturdy in my decision that the church only exists and will continue to exist to literally <sighs> Man, this is this is not for children. I'm so sorry. But <laughs> it only exists to literally rape you of your hard-earned money. I'm going to say that every single time. If someone comes up to me on the street and says, Hey, I know you. You're that guy who does that podcast. I'm like, yeah. So what's your position on the church? Oh, to take you of, to rape you of your money. Yeah, just That's just what it is. It's, it's a freaking money-making machine, and that's all it will always be. Whether or not it gives off great moral advice, that's up to you. To me, I think it does accomplish that in a sense, but it's not its not worth it to have a few good moral things in your life and to, to give you better organization in your life just to rape you of your money. That is the biggest F you I've ever seen in, in anything. But then again, I, I know other religions do that too, so it's not surprising, which is very sad. Now, going back to open-mindedness, keeping in mind that the church is here to rape you of your money, and I'm going to say that a lot of times. I, I can't believe how many times I said that. Keeping that in mind, that I don't know, I, I cannot determine yet if the church is either very smart or very dumb on the subject of open-mindedness. Okay, now let me, um, let me map out my dilemma about that term and relate it to why I'm not sure if <laughs> if the church is very smart about this or very dumb. Okay. So when I say open-mindedness, um, I think I actually didn't, I, you know, I'm just going to pull up a definition real quick. Okay. I did look this up earlier. I just forgot what it said. Definition. I'm going to read this. This is just based off a of Google search. So you can do whatever search you want. You can use Bing that no one uses, but whatever. Uh, it says, Quote, open-mindedness is the willingness to search actively for evidence against one's favored beliefs, plans, or goals, and to weigh such evidence fairly when it is available. Being open-minded does not imply that one is indecisive, wishy-washy, or incapable of thinking for oneself. So that's that's a pretty good definition. I'll, I'll go with that. Um, now, as an individual, we don't have control over one another of how everyone thinks but there are organizations out there like the church who will try their hardest and they've done a a freaking a fantastic job of mind controlling their members okay there's there's no other way to put that i have to be blunt that's just what it is even though there are certain factors and tactics that the church uses to keep their membership steady. I wouldn't say hi anymore because more and more people are leaving. Congrats to you. Um, but because the church has been doing this for many years, there is, I guess you could call it a weakness of psyche amongst its members that has, that is directly related to open-mindedness. Now, what do I mean by that? Because that was a lot of words in one or two sentences that I just put out there. Okay, let me, (laughs) again, this is going back to, I'm not sure if the church is dumb or smart about this. Again, the goal is for the church to get all your money, okay? They do this by promising false things, like you'll be uh, happy together forever if you go through the temple, Um, you'll have more blessings in your life if you live a certain way, Uh, if you contribute to the church, you'll just be happier in general and you can't live without the church. Like that's the big thing. You just can't live without the church. The world is super evil. We don't want you to be a part of it because eventually you'll be unhappy. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Now, when I talk about the church, again, I'm talking about the 
the higher ups. I'm not talking about your average member who just goes every Sunday and does their callings or whatever they need to do to feel better about themselves, knowing that, hey, I went to church this week. Her, her, her. I feel better. Oh, thanks, God. Thanks for answering my prayers of giving me the courage to go to the church. Okay, whatever. Whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the higher ups who run the church. Now, with their scheme of getting people to give them their money so that they can get rich, the issue comes when an individual who is not sure of themselves, who may not necessarily be heterosexual, who may not like, if you're a male, they may not necessarily like females. If they are female, they may not necessarily like males. The, the core and structure that makes the church run and work the way it does is that families are together for, forever. And they classify a family as a man and a woman with children. That is their core structure. So the issue comes up when, when a person doesn't want to be in a traditional, I used air quotes even though you can't see it, but a traditional uh, marriage traditional gender roles when a person refutes that possibility and wants to go down a a different path the church as shown in my thumbnail gets worried they're screaming internally wait a minute they say but if they do that then what's going to be their willingness to give us money how do we trick them to give us their tithing how do we make it so that they feel more accepted to into our church so that we can take their money <laughs> that's all I, I know it's a stupid joke I'll, I'll stop i'll stop it's it's really hard for me not to say the church wants to take your money it's really difficult for me not to say that you have to understand once for all of you ex-mormons and, and never mormons out there looking at this from an external point of view you know what I'm talking about. When you realize that the church wants to take your money, you just can't get off it. You get pissed. You get mad. I get mad too because all that tithing money, ooh, mm, I could have been so much more rich. But anyway, going back to the topic at hand because I don't want to go on a rant. I've, I've done plenty of that already. So <laughs> the dilemma for the church is we have individuals and groups of people who do not want to fit our traditional uh, gender roles. How the hell do we get them to continue giving us money and get them to uh, to realize that they need this church in their life so that we can take their money? Uh, <laughs> and the funny thing is, the funny thing about this and why it's a dilemma is because so many of those higher ups have deep down inside already decided that they they are annoyed they do not like and they do not agree with that type of lifestyle when an individual is considering not doing the typical gender role uh, having children being a housewife or or being the man who is the breadwinner whatever whatever their their view of a traditional marriage and a traditional family should be when an individual goes against that they get worried the and to continue on that point of being open-minded there are so many general authorities who you know for a fact, you just know for a fact, they do not like non-heterosexual people. <laughs> so it's been a struggle for many years for the church to adapt. And I'm going to use the term adapt here. It's been so difficult for the church to adapt to allowing uh, the LGBTQIA plus community into their lives, into their religion, into their, their way of living. So that way they can take your money. Um, and again, I don't know if it's smart on them for, for, uh, oh, it's right. I, that was the whole point I was trying to make. So is it either dumb of them to continue to act that way outwardly? So that way more people who are not heterosexual can stay away from the church. Well, not necessarily because then they don't get their money, but at the same time, when they are very firm on their traditional marriage and traditional family roles, all the other members who may have the same feelings that they, that they do, they, they revel and they're like, yes, thank you, Mr. Uh, General Authority, for agreeing with me that anyone who's you know, not, I just say non-heterosexual because it's easier for me, okay? But for anyone who's non-heterosexual to not 
experience the same blessings I do because I stick to the traditional family, uh, family presence that you provide for me and my family. I stick to the traditional marriage that you would like us, that you would like all the members to, uh, enjoy and experience. You know, I do these things. And when someone else doesn't want to do those things, I don't like them. So that's why me Panda talking now, (laughs) I don't understand if the church is smart or dumb for allowing the authorities to, I mean, you can just tell (laughs) to openly disregard the needs and the wants of the LGBTQIA plus community. That was really lengthy. I'm sorry about that. It's just, there's a lot to go on with that topic of open-mindedness, but it, it does tie in to the last word on my thumbnail, which is acceptance. Okay. This is the big one. And, uh, I, the big one of the three, in my opinion, for the church. Again, the dilemma is on one hand, if the church accepts all non-heterosexual people in full and gives them the rights and blessings and benefits that are given to, um, excuse me, that are given to heterosexual families and individuals, then they get more money. So it's a win-win for the church. If they don't completely accept the LGBTQIA plus community, I still hate that term. Come up with a new term, please. Anyway, those are my thoughts. If they don't accept those people, then they lose money. They lose money and they, they have a possibility of losing more memberships because it, this is a fact by now in 2021. The fact is there are plenty of heterosexual families and individuals out there who have the same feelings and thoughts towards non-heterosexual people, very much so like the general authorities do. So when a general authority goes against those, those thoughts and beliefs and it is more accepting towards non-heterosexual people coming into the church and receiving all those blessings and benefits that would be guaranteed two traditional families and traditional like religious roles. I'll just call them that. Then there's a, there's a big chance that more members will leave because they have those, (laughs) those thoughts and those beliefs ingrained in themselves, whether it be from their upbringing, whether it be from the church directly, there will be people out there who will not accept non heterosexual people as people. And what, what I'm trying to get there is that unfortunately, the human race is disgusting. This is a fact. This has been proven over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. As a matter of fact, uh, if you want, <laughs> if you don't believe me, I dare you to go onto Reddit and go to a subreddit called Noah Get the Boat. <laughs> I haven't been there long, and to be honest, I don't, <laughs> I don't always look at all the posts there. But man, there are some horrendous things that people bring to light, bring the internet's attention to. And it's like, why, why is this even possible as a human to do such a thing? People are crazy. People are stupid. People are smart. People are random. Life is completely random is, is what I'm trying to get at there. So again, I'm going to circle back to acceptance to finish up because I know that was kind of a little bit of a rant. Um, I, and I'm sure there are other words for it too, but I'm just going to say rant for now. Going back to acceptance. And I've said this before in a previous podcast. I know I have. Regardless of who you are, under the LGBTQIA plus community, the church will never completely accept you for who you are. I promise that. I absolutely promise that. As much as you may want them to, they are not going to do that. Because as explained uh, just a couple moments ago, it's a very difficult balancing act for the church to be completely acceptable of LGBTQIA plus um, community members or to not be acceptable of said members. What they're trying to do is they're trying to create an atmosphere in which they win. That's it. They don't care about the members like you think they may. For those of you who are still in the church, they really do not care about you the way you think they do. They care about you when you have completed a series of check, uh, excuse me, a series of, of goals 
and tasks off of their checklists. So that way they can ensure that you stay a part of the church for as long as possible. So that way you continue to give your money to them and eventually when your children are old enough to work, their money to the church. That's the whole reason that they exist. Okay? Man, so many things were covered in this podcast episode. But underneath it all, the church is and will always be, in my opinion, in this weird balancing act of trying to appease the the needs and wants of all of its members, regardless if you're straight, gay, bi, transgender. They have this weird balancing act going on, and it's it's not going to go away. But in my humble opinion, I don't think anyone should be a part of it, because at the end of the day, what are they doing? They're raping you of your money. <laughs> Happy Pride Month. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to end like that. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible way to end. Uh, okay. I'm done for now. There, I'm exhausted talking about this. It's just awful. But then again, I look at my thumbnail and I, I chuckle. <laughs> oh, it's great. Guys and girls and all of you who identify as neither. Everyone. Everyone listening. I, I just want to say that, um, you know, people are random. There are people I like. There are people I dislike. There are people who are going to like me. There are people who are going to dislike me. That's fine. I'm totally okay with this because life is unpredictable. But at the end of the end of the day, I would just advise you to carefully think about your position in life. Go home, ask yourself, who are you? For those of you in the church, again, if if the first phrases that come to your mind are, "Oh, I'm a child of God. I'm I'm a son or daughter of God," then it's my opinion that you've been brainwashed and you need to reevaluate where you stand in life and who you really are. For those of you who say, oh, I'm a painter, I'm a musician, I'm a gamer. I'm like, for me, I'm, I'm not any of those things. I'm like a casual gamer, if anything, now because I have so many games. But I would say, I'll just give you a little insight of, of what I responded um, when I gave myself self the challenge, I can't speak. When I gave myself the challenge of who are you, first thing I thought of, well, I'm a person. I am a male 32-year-old living in Southern California in a dinky apartment that I want to leave. But also, I, I am a musician. I am a gamer. Not a pro gamer. Not a casual gamer. I'm somewhere in between. And um, hopefully, one day, I would like to think... I could be a tabletop game designer because that's something I'm very interested in right now and I'll see where it takes me. And to be honest, I wouldn't have said any of those things if I were still a Mormon. It's really sad to think about. I don't mean to to leave this podcast on a melancholy note, but it's truth. And that's the reason why I do these things. Again, I'm not paid by any sponsorships or by any person to do this. I'm taking my Sunday morning. I'm doing this on Sunday morning. Um, just to give my my opinions, stringed with facts, of course, to, to help others. Because, again, and I've said this before, <laughs> if just one person listens and finds a way to better themselves by leaving the church or by understanding the church a little bit better, then I feel good about myself for doing this. And that's it. I think I'll end off there. Yeah. Again, happy Pride Month. Be good to yourselves. And, um, you know, until next time, this has been Panda X. (laughs) I am very tired, but I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.